parallel fill tool satin option. You can do it with a weave fill, but at the sizes you normally make these rope borders, it's um, it's a waste of time. You'll end up with a patchy satin stitch look. backspace that and I just hit my backspace button and I want to sneeze so excuse me <coughs> <coughs> oh I don't know where that one snuck up from I can just go away start the turn to disappear in underneath the next one. Enter that, put it into non-simulated stitch mode, pick up my run line and run my travel line to stop me getting any jumps between each motif the side of my trace line up to the point where my guide line shows my start point is okay I like that one hold down shift tell those group go into object details drop that down to 99 go into dimensions 15 that's the width that's the height okay make motif you can make them smaller you don't have to make them my size you can make them bigger okay rope 3 And the reason I like my trace lines at the bottom is because I don't have to remember how tall the motifs are. Rope 3 has been created. Okay, thank you. Go and pick up my motif run line tool and open them up underneath the others. go. Three rope motifs. Quite simply made. You only need to make one single link. But to get the perfect one single link you do need to do the original one and then duplicate it, move the duplicate along, duplicate again, move that along and then work on the middle one to reshape the nodes and then once you've done that, duplicate that, take it over to the end of the previous three and see does it fit properly. I hope you have fun. I love making motifs. I can find millions of uses for them. And I've literally got hundreds of motifs. Okay, that's the Wilcom one. That's the Wilcom one. And where's the other Wilcom one?
I think that's it. All the rest are mine. So I've got from here down. And there are loads and loads in there. So have fun. Enjoy doing them. And in case you're wondering, do they make nice shapes? Yes, they do. Most people like to make um, curves. What you can't do with a motif online is this. I don't make a very good job of going around sharp corners. But they do make an excellent job. And we'll just highlight that. And we're going to object reshape. And I'll find the trace line. I'll put a curve node in there. I'll put a curve node in there. I'll put a curve node in here. And I'll put a curve node in here. And I'll move that curve node up. And I'll move this curve node out. And if I click on that one and hit my space bar to turn it to a circle, And the same with that one. They do very nicely on curves. You can use them as a stamp. Any motif you make can be used as a stamp. I don't know if you could use this one as a fill. I suppose you could. But I wouldn't see much point in using it as a fill. And if we look at that down at 100%. And if we go into Object Details, tell that 3. Tap on that. OK. You see how it's tightened it up? So you've lost the little gaps that existed. You can change the spacing inside of your object details page. Right, I think I've talked long enough now. I've shown you three separate rope motifs. And as long as you put the travel lines in so as you don't get the jumps, they should stitch out smoothly. But please remember, motifs work best when you digitize them from left to right. In other words, clockwise. If you go the other way around, I don't know if it'll do it with the rope because I've never tried it the wrong way around with the rope. It's making a fibber of me. Normally, and it might well have done it for all I know, it will put any underlay on the top. And that's because you're asking it stitch backwards. So we'll look at that in non-digi mode. No, it hasn't done it. So, but you'll notice it's put the motif on the inside instead of the outside.
there you go. Hope that helps. As I say, have fun with it. I love to make motif. I think it's the best thing we were ever given inside of the programme, apart from branching. So I've talked way too long now, so I'm off. I need to have a drink. <laughs>